This week's channel message from the angels is a beautiful one where they are calling us out, asking us to be ready to hold our own vibration when we are out in the world, to not conform or lower our vibration, to blend or to relate to others, to try to stay in our high vibe. It's a gorgeous message. Um, and uh, and I'm going to, before we dig into the message, I normally, we my, we step right into it. We listen to the full thing. And at, at the end, uh, we explain it. But I'm going to give you a little bit of, of information at the beginning to uh, so that as you're listening to it, you can follow because the angels use the word now in, in kind of a, they're not very specific about their now. <laughs> For them, there is no time. Now is all time. So anyways, uh, there's a little bit of explanation to start, and then we dig into the message. So by the way, welcome back to my channel, you guys. And uh, for those of you who are new here, my name is Ann Tucker. I'm a trance channel. I channel from the angelic realm. By trance, I mean I go into a deep meditative state. And from there, I raise my vibration. I go up as high as I can go, a little higher. I connect, and then messages and healing come through from the angels. And I share them here with you guys every Friday on YouTube. And lots of you have asked, if you want to join me live, you can join me in my Facebook group, which is called Spirit Means Business on Facebook. And that is where I go live. And then I share that recording here with you guys on YouTube. So if you want to join me, come on over. I would love to see you in our Facebook group. All right, here's the message. Okay, so so today's message, you guys know how the voice of the angels changes sometimes. Like sometimes they go into more practical language and then we have our poet angels who come in and speak to us and he's like, beautiful. Today, the poet angel is back. We have serious poet angel happening today, which is, I love it. I love today's message. And before we dig into it, um, I, I wanna tell you a little bit about how I see some of the metaphors that they're using because I think they're not entirely metaphorical. So today's message is, I, I called it, uh, we say your name because this is all about us being who we are and holding our space. And remember how we talked about in past Friday Lives, one of the big messages we've been getting from the angels is that we need to, we've been in this place where we have been, you know, retreating from the world. So COVID was a great time for us to retreat from the world. Not that it was a great time, but it was a time <laughs> in which we retreated from the world and we were in our own energy. And that was important. And, and us in our spiritual circles, we have separated ourselves from the world and, and gone inside and gone into our spiritual groups and, and, and maybe, and if you are not, if you are in a location, like maybe you're in one of like spiritual outposts, you're like out there on the frontier and there aren't a lot of spiritual people around you. Well, maybe you haven't been sharing that side of yourself, right? Maybe you've been keeping that secret or hidden. So we've all been in our own energy, keeping it internal. And they're telling us now is the time that we have to be willing to come out and be seen. And the big lesson for us is how do we do that and not lower our vibration? And they talked about this a lot in, in uh, one of the past, the past, just recently, the last couple weeks about how do we be among others and not lower our vibration in order to relate to them. To, how do we not relate through our wounding? How do we instead relate through love to stay in our high vibe? And that is the goal because the whole point of us being here and, and, and helping with this ascension is to hold the high vibe. But it's so hard for us to do with our human conditioning. We're taught to, that we have to blend and we have to merge and we have to keep everybody comfortable around us. And if you come in and you're all bright and shiny, that makes people uncomfortable sometimes. So we lower our vibration and we make ourselves small. And so they've been talking about this, right? How do we do this? How do we go out into the world and be our bright and shiny selves? And so today's poem from the angels is telling us, they're saying, we say your name. So in the moments that, that we don't say it, they speak it for us. And I want to explain before we go into it, there is a passage in here where they take us and they use a lot of like now the word now understand that they mean like sometimes they mean future now so don't get attached now doesn't always mean right now with angels they are kind of like when they start talking about a time period they're in it and they're saying now and we're like you mean now and they're like no we mean now <laughs> it can be very confusing but so don't get too attached when they say the word now they say it in a couple places and it means different time periods but they were taking us through a sequence as we go through this this message we start out where we are now and then they're moving us they're saying we are taking you into a forest and there's this whole thread through the whole message about being in the trees and i thought at first is this a metaphor and then i realized it is both a metaphor because they love their double entendres it is both a metaphor for being a tree 
A tree is always a tree and a tree exists throughout the centuries and the world changes around the tree and the tree bends, but it doesn't break, right? The tree is always the tree and the tree is rooted. It is grounded, right? It is one of the most enduring, like some of the oldest, I think the oldest living thing on the planet is a tree, right? So, so the tree as a metaphor for being yourself among everything else is a really good metaphor. But then also they bring us into the trees because in the times that we don't, in the times that we don't say our own name and the times that we are not our true selves, they're, they are in this message. They are saying they're going to help us by letting, because think about the trees. The trees are the worldwide web of the world. The trees have a network of roots that spread out and they connect with each other. And it's, it's a fascinating thing. There's a, a, a show on Netflix called, a friend of mine told me about this called Fantastic Fungi, which goes into this, which I think I have to watch. But they, between the roots and between the mushrooms, it creates a network of communication that goes around the world. And so if we communicate, if we are not able to say our name and be heard, if we communicate through the trees, we are heard by the earth. So that is what the angels are up to in this message. When they talk about going into the forest, think about it from that perspective. Think about the trees as a way of they are listening to us and communicating, amplifying who we are through the world, through their network, okay? So have that in mind as you are listening to the message. All right, and you're saying good morning, great to see you. Thank you, Megan, for joining. Susan, hey, great to see you, glad to be here. Mary, hi, Mary. Mary was at our last retreat. I can't wait. Our next one, I just scheduled it, so I'll be announcing that soon. So super exciting. Um, so I've always loved trees so much, feel so connected to these marvelous beings. Yeah, and they are, right? I know we have many, many tree huggers among us, <laughs> me included. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and dig into the message. All right, so here's what they say. They say, we speak your name aloud each time you refrain from expressing what you are. We speak your name. We call you out among the timbers of the forest that remains, the decades that unfurl, the spot that you embrace. We take you now, your journey onward, and lead you into this next time forming. We speak your name. We claim it loud. We speak you out and herald the new time coming. We speak you out into the sun dance on the leaves as they settle in the forest among the trees. You are welcome, imprint to the soil. Watch the rain dance. We invite you now to speak your name, to claim the light you share, the reverberation of where you are formed within the belly, your entrance to this life. The solace never found again is your own expression. You're felt throughout destiny in these times that remain to be felt out loud in praise we say your name. We invite you now to step proud, to be that heightened state, to call yourself into the embrace of the ones who will share, the forest and the trees who know you well, who speak your tone, who envelop you now in their shade, who welcome you. Solemn retreat into a glade of passing time, a welcome to be felt aloud when we say your name. You are called here by ourselves to speak aloud the chime of what is important, important to your mind, to speak aloud the celebration of the centuries past, to say to yourself, I abound with what was, what, no, what is no longer, and it dwells like a canker, like a sore within myself. I wish to purge, I wish to blend, I wish to allow what is. I wish to be that self that rises now and answers to my name. I want to be that self that calls you now to come and see me, to see my flame, that enters now to the prism, into the stone of this plane where all are welcomed by their name, where all are made to feel at home. Here all are stopped and startled to their day and live on in the remembrance of where they were. We invite you now to take on the legend of what was and drop it down, let it unfurl. Let it be what was. Take your time. Let it unfurl. Speak the names and rituals of they who danced and remembered their days, who are gone from this earth. Speak them well. 
But they who dwelled, who only came to feel this earth, to see it now as it is different, who came and left, and solidly they played their part in this play, but they do not remain. You are still harboring the energy of what was. We speak into you the possibilities from whence you came. The ones that blocked your entrance, who laid their way and encumbered yourself. We wish you now to dissolve these, to make a place within the space where you are at truce with what you are, where you embrace this now rising time and feel the self as you are, encumbered no more, lifting beyond the shadow of that which played in longer days. Now time is short, its passage marked by the breath of what is sought, yourself. Yourself in these times, passage times, to stay and say your name is what remains. To stay and say your name, to be that self you are and none other, to be the one that challenges the known, to be the self with open heart, to be the self that feels their essence and stays within the certainty of what is right to them. To be the self that has knowledge which was gained through experience and self-knowing. To share this in the blanket of your field and to let it drip and merge between the syllables of each word. To say again your name from whence you came. To speak this language, to emerge, to let yourself feel the earth and its purge, to be the self unconquered. The daily ritual of life that will emerge, the self enfolded by daylight. The trees relinquish their claim upon you now, they shade you no more. In this, the instant of this time beckons you onward and you must make ready. The times will change and your life in its perilous form must move onward into the space of heady understanding of the self that you are, unconquered, unrelenting, and yet at ease in their own self, to be that self intertwined within your spirit, undivided, yearning no more, a blanket of what you are is completed and may be shed like the leaves, no longer bare, but revealed for what you are. Take hold, you are required. We say your name. <sighs> chills, absolute chills, you guys, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, they're not saying it in like a soft way there. <laughs> they're, saying, they're like giving us a great big swift boot in the fanny. <laughs> what they're doing. That is a boot in the fanny. That is telling us, like, if we don't do it, they're going to do it for us. They're helping us. And I love how they say, like, come forward. We're calling you now. We're calling you into this forest, into the trees. And the trees are going to help you and amplify who you are. But then they say at the end, they say, and that's not going to last forever. That pretty soon the, the forest is going to give way and relinquish. And we have to stand on our own. And so they're saying the time is coming, right? You're saying, awesome. Yeah, totally awesome. Okay, so if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and break it down and talk it through paragraph by paragraph. All right, so they start out, they say, we speak your name aloud each time you refrain from expressing what you are. So they're saying they're right there with us there and they're singing us out in praise, right? They're singing us out in this loving way of celebrating what we are exactly as we are. So when we don't do it for ourselves, they do it for us. They say, we speak your name. We call you out among the timbers of the forest that remains. The decades that unfurl, the spot that you embrace. So here they are, they're bringing this into this idea, this idea of the trees around us, the trees that surround us now, the timbers that remains. I think this is referring to like humanity has an impact on the globe. <laughs> like there is no longer the same number of trees that were here before, right? Like there's, we have not had a gentle impact on the planet. So the timbers that remain, and they said the decades that unfurl the spot that you embrace. So across all time, we're claiming this spot, this now, we take you now, your journey onward, and lead you into this next time forming. So they're saying, starting from where you are right now, they are gonna lead us into what is next, right? And so here, what is next? They say, we speak your name, we claim it loud. We speak you out and herald the new time coming. So they're trying to help us, ease us, 
into the, what's going to be demanded of us in the future, not far away. They're saying, we speak you out into the sun dance. So here we are, they're bringing us into this idea. We're now surrounded by trees. If you can imagine in your mind's eye, we're now surrounded by the trees. They say, we speak you out into the sun dance on the leaves as they settle in the forest. They're trying to set the tone or set the space. We are in among the forest. The trees are listening to us and nature is listening to us. They say, among the trees, you are welcome imprint to the soils. They really want us to sort of let down and relax into the earth and feel that this is a space where we are safe, we are held, we are protected. This is a space where we can be ourselves, where we can say our name, where we can be our full self without feeling like we have to retract our energy at all. So they're saying imprint that feeling, the feeling you have when you're all by yourself, imprint that into the soil. They say, watch the rain dance. So just be here, be in that contemplative state they've been talking about. We invite you now to speak your name. So this is why I think the stage that we're heading into, this where they keep talking about, we're heading into the state of contemplation. This is what it is. In the state of contemplation, we're surrounded by the trees. We're supposed to speak ourselves into the soil. Let ourselves, we be, you know, communicate ourselves into the earth, right? We invite you now to speak your name, to claim the light you share, the reverberation of where you are formed within the belly, your entrance to this life. So I think they're saying it sort of comes from this second chakra space, right? Let, let that form in the belly, your third chakra space, let it form in the belly, they corrected me there. Third chakra space, let it form there and move outward. Um, and they go, and so from that space, you can activate who you are, the essence of who you are from that third chakra space. So they say, next paragraph, they say, the solace never found again is your own expression. And by the, that, they mean that you are the only one who is you. This incarnation of yourself is the only time that you will express the light exactly the way that you're doing it in this life. So you have a unique window. You are a unique, unique facet of your soul. So your solace, the thing that gives you comfort, which will never be found again, is your own expression. This is the thing that's going to make you feel the best about being alive. And this time is to express the unique facet that you are of your soul's light and you're saying like being grounded and present in the body right yeah absolutely being grounded and present in the body is what we want to be doing and speaking through that exactly as we are without retracting or conforming our energy to anybody else or anything else around us yeah and then they say okay the solace never found again is your own expression and then this is your felt throughout destiny in these times that remain. So throughout these times, the destiny that you are to feel throughout these times remaining, the destiny felt throughout is to be felt out loud in praise. So this is what you're meant to feel in these times that remain, the times that are left in this incarnation is to have you feel like you can express yourself in praise, right? To be like, I am this and I love myself and this is awesome. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to be getting to. And you're saying, speaking through this, such freedom. Yeah. All right, and then they say, uh, to be felt out loud in praise, we say your name. So they're helping us. They're guiding us through this process. The angels are supporting us as we do this. Next paragraph, they say, we invite you now to step proud to be that heightened state. And by proud, they don't mean like the sin of pride. They don't mean, not that I'm a big thing on sin, but, but they don't mean pride like, you know, I'm better than everyone. To be proud is to like step forward, to step up, to step into the light is to be to step proud means to put yourself forward so to step proud put yourself forward to be that heightened state right to call yourself into the embrace of the ones who will share which are the trees to call yourself into the trees the forest and the trees who know you well so they already know us right who speak your tone who envelop you now in their shade so here you can just visualize as you're listening to this as you feel if you listen to this back if you replay this Imagine yourself now just surrounded in the support of the trees, right? And they're supporting you in their shade, protecting you, right? Who welcome you. And they say the solemn retreat into a glade of passing time. So here's like that. It's sort of like this is that uh, being in your own energy, but supported, surrounded, protected, right? As time goes by, you can be in this place of quiet. To be a welcome, to be felt aloud when we say your name. So this is almost like you're in a space like a private sound booth where you can practice and not worry about who hears you. So this is that space they're creating. This is a practice booth. Think of it that way. Like surrounded by the trees, they're gonna hear you, they're gonna reflect you, you're being said in praise, you can imprint into the soil. This is a place for you to practice 
being your full light. They go on to say, you are called here by ourselves to speak aloud the chime of what is important, what important to yourself, uh, the, the important to your mind. So this, these are the kinds of things that, that they want us to be thinking about, to contemplate as we're in this space. To speak aloud the chime of what is important to your mind, to speak aloud the celebration of the centuries past. So they're acknowledging that as we go through this process of coming to terms with what we are, which is what we're doing, we're in the contemplative state to come to terms with what we are. We have to also reflect on what has been, what, what our experience has been, what all of our past lives have been, like all the ways in which we've encountered the conditioning that we have, our culture, like all of those things, we have to come to terms with that as we're in this space. So they say to speak aloud the celebration. So it is something to be celebrated this of centuries past. To say to yourself, I abound with what was, what is no longer. So, so to recognize that, that this colors us in ways that we have a hard time recognizing. All of our conditioning, that it circulates through us and it can be really hard for us to see it sometimes. Right, it dwells like a canker, like a sore within myself. So this is something we want to get rid of. We want to we want to recognize it. We want to celebrate it and release it because it is dimming our light. So I wish to purge. I wish to blend. I wish to allow what is. So purge what was and blend into the now. Right? Don't resist. Don't resist these new times that are coming. To blend into the new times that are coming. Right? I wish to allow what is. So that's that idea. We were trying to get into flow. And I wish to be that self that rises now and answers to my name. So I love this, that they are calling us. Right, They're not only saying our name to the trees, but they are calling us. And they're saying they're giving us a space where we can answer to that, where we can step up and, and be called to be who we are. Right, and You're saying the contrary of shame and dim the light. Yeah, the, yeah, the opposite of that. Right, yeah. And that's what we're trying to do is to step proud is the opposite of shame and dimming our light. So thank you for that. That's a great contrast. You're right. Um, all right. I want to be, so I love that, to be the self that answers to my name. I want to be that self that calls you now to come and see me, to see my flame. So that's what we're trying to be. And that enters now to the prism, to the stone of this plane where all are welcomed by their, by, by their name. So I like that they mention here the prism. Because that's that idea of this facet that you are, that you are a prism, a facet of your higher self, your unique incarnation, that you are, you are made to speak that into this stone, which is like the earth, right? Where all are welcomed by their name. So they're, they're saying there's space for you. There's space for every single one of us, right? Where all are made to feel at home. So we just need to claim it. And that's the hard part is claiming it. Yeah. You're saying, yippee, being called to who we are. Yes, absolutely. All right. Then they say, here all are... And so then they're bringing us back to where we are right now. They say, here, in the reality that we're living now, all are stopped and startled to their day and live on in the remembrance of where they were. So I love that idea, that vision of like everybody, it's like rather than being in flow, they are stopped and startled, almost like, oh my gosh, like, okay, now I have to think of when you're startled, what you do. When you startle, you retract, right? This is startled. It's pulling in. All are stopped in their flow and startled. They draw back in, in our relationship to each other. We're not being stepping proud, stepping forward into the light, shining our light. Here, all are stopped and startled to their day and live on in the remembrance of where they were. So we're stopped by our conditioning, by all the, our culture, our background, everything that's happened to us, right? And then they say, we invite you now to take on the legend of what was and drop it down. So just to re recognize all of it, appreciate all of it, celebrate all of it, because it's nothing to be done. There's nothing, there's no judgment. We don't have to be in judgment of what we were. Celebrate it and let it go, right? It has to be celebrated. As a matter of fact, it has to be recognized. And you know that through your own healing is that the thing that aches is to be recognized, and all of your wounding needs to be, like you need to feel that it was true and then you can let it go. So we have to, to, to take it on and then let it down, drop it down, let it unfurl, right? So I love that, that they're giving grace to this. They're saying, let it unfurl, recognize it, but you're letting it go, you're letting it unfurl in a way that is beautiful, that is, that is 
respectful of where you've been and what you've experienced. Let it be what was. Take your time. Let it unfurl. They say, speak the names and rituals of they who danced and remembered their days. So this is like honoring your ancestors, your past selves, right? They're saying, speak the names and rituals. So, so they want us to go through this place as we are learning about. So think about the past message about harvesting. We're in a time of harvest. So they want us to recognize and acknowledge and glean as much of the learning as we can in this time when we're in this protected state of contemplation. They want us to draw all that and to see it and to hold it, to celebrate it, to love it in the process of allowing it to unfurl, letting it go, right? So they they'd speak the names and rituals of they who danced and remembered their days. So things that have passed, who are gone from this earth, speak them well. So they're saying, don't worry about it. Don't judge it. Speak them well. Speak them with, with respect and understanding and compassion. They say, but they who dwelled, who only came to feel this earth, to see it now as it is different, who came and left and solidly they played their part in this play, but they do not remain. So they're saying all that stuff that we're talking about, yes, bring it forward, celebrate it, but it's not alive right now. That it is only existing because you are bringing it forward. So they're saying that we need to be able to acknowledge it respectfully and then step into the now and let it pass away into the past. That the only thing that is true is what is existing now, right? They who came and left and solidly played the part right, in this play, right? So they live, they live, they live the full life and it needs to be recognized, but they do not remain. They're not real. They don't live right now. It's, it does not, it's not, it's not. If we can let it go and shift our perspective to what is real, we won't see all that stuff. We just see ourselves as we are, right? You are still harboring the energy of what was. They're telling us that we are, we are holding it. We're holding it in place because we're holding it in ourselves as part of our conditioning, part of our belief systems, but it's not true. It's just our baggage, right? We step out into the world and we bring all of our perceptions and all of our belief systems and none of it's true, None of it is, is the world that is like available to us. It's just the filter that we're looking through. They're saying, let it unfurl respectfully. Take this time of contemplation to sift through all of that respectfully, lovingly, and to let it go. So now they say, next paragraph, they say, we speak into you the possibilities from whence you came. So we, they're, now they're speaking their breath, the angels. You know, the angels, the way they work is they breathe in like a moment of clarity, of opening. It's like they clear a passage for our thinking. So they reach, when we are full of confusion and we're in our like crazy space, they breathe in with their breath a little tiny fissure of hope, that like a crack that we can see out and see the light so that we can, we can choose to follow that breath, follow that crack up into clarity. And that's what they do. And they just keep doing that over and over again. So we may be in our like our funnel of crazy and they come in and they give us a breath of hope. And it's just a little tiny fissure because they can't, they can't do it for us. We have to choose, but they can make a little space, right? To show us a way is what they do. Is show us a way towards hope and possibility. So we speak into you the possibilities from whence you came. So who are you? Like, who is your full self? Like, what is your true essence? The ones that blocked your entrance, who laid their way and encumbered yourself, we wish now to dissolve these. So what are the things that you're conditioning when you came in? So when you came in, you had your mother, you had your father. So these are major ways that, and, and your mom and dad may have been amazing. There was a time in my life when I've been like, oh, I had no trauma in my childhood. And now I look back and I look at all of my healing. We all have insane trauma from our childhood. No matter how hard your parents tried to be great parents, there are things that you received from them no matter what, even for you as a parent, you may try to be the best parent you possibly can, but you are contractually obligated to wound your children and you will do it. You can try not to and they will misunderstand you and be wounded. And it's part of the deal. It's part of like we come in and we have had to be wounded in order to play out the, the role that we were meant to play. So the ones that blocked your entrance, so that this could be that as you came in, the ones that the things that fell in your path as you came into the planet that created your wounding, right? Who laid their way, who did what they were meant to do and encumbered yourself with your karma, right? We wish now to dissolve these. So this is, they've been talking about how we want to dissolve our karma. So that's what they're referring to here. 
who uh, we wish not to dissolve these, to make a place within the space where you are at truce with what you are. So they're trying to create a space. They talk about the breath of the angels, creating that hope, that possibility, that openness. They're trying to create a space for us in this period of contemplation where we can see through our karma and our conditioning to the truth of what we are, right? They're trying to make a space, right? So listen to that. It's super cool to make a place within the space where you are at truce with what you are, where you come to terms, where you come to acceptance, where you're no longer in judgment of what you are, right? And you're saying, this is so beautiful. I think so too. You said, I had some crazy stuff come up over Christmas. I'm ready to let those beliefs and conditioning of childhood go. That is awesome. You're saying, yes. You're saying, LOL, so true. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. I think the Christmas was a super wonderful time for thinking and for going for this contemplative state they've been talking about. It is on us. You know what I mean? It is such an opportunity. So to be that self, where is it? So I lost my place. So they say, um, okay, here we are. To wish not to dissolve these, to make a place within the space where you are at truce with what you are, where you embrace this now rising time and feel the self as you are encumbered no more. So this is without our karma. Lift beyond the shadow of that which played in longer days. And this is a reference to the fact that time is moving faster now, right? We are in a time where you can, I mean, you can feel it. Like how quick did this year go by? But in longer days, right, before this awakening began, although it's been kind of a continual journey, but before these last days where we are just like in this, it's quickening, quickening, quickening. So there was a a lifting beyond the shadow of what played in longer days. Um, So this is, we're trying to move beyond all of our conditioning, everything they've been talking about. All right, next paragraph. They say, now time is short. Love that. It's passage marked by the breath of what is sought, yourself. So this is saying the breath of what is sought. They want your breath, like your name is your breath speaking out into the world. It carries the frequency of what you are. So what is sought right now, what they're just, everything is looking towards, like everything needs your vibration, your true essence. They're saying this is what is sought is yourself. This is the thing that is most important right now for the earth and its ascension is for us to be ourselves, for humanity, for us to be ourselves. So what is sought is yourself yourself in these passage times to say to stay and say your name is what remains so this is the most important thing for us to figure out to get to who we are and to be that light and to not dim our light when we are among others who are at a different vibration so important and so challenging they say to stay and say your name to be that self you are and none other to be the one that challenges the known right so like like to be the one that is different that sticks out (laughs) that is willing to stay in your light, to step proud, even when it's not understood by other people, to challenge what, to challenge the known, to be the self with open heart, right? To stay open, even when you feel threatened, even when you feel hurt, to stay open, even when other people hurt your feelings, to stay open, that can, to not go into, like all of us, the fight or flight response. Like when you're hurt, our tendency is to withdraw and contract, right? Or to, to fight, one of the two. So we have to resist, we have to learn to see ourselves when we do that and say, that is conditioning. We need to get back to the space where we can see when we are hurt, we can see the wounding that it's coming from, from the other person and stay in our open heart. So this is part of where we have to be ourselves, right? When we go to our flight or flight response, we are returning to our conditioning. We're returning to our old selves, to that shadow. So we have to learn even when we are hurt, you can be hurt and you can still be loving. You can see the wounding that it came from. So um, to be the self with open heart, to be the self that feels their essence. So what is it that their essence is? Where are they speaking from? If you are hurt, what is their essence that it's coming from? And stays within the certainty of what is right to them. So to be the self that feels their essence, excuse me, to feel your own essence and stays within the certainty of what is right to you. So even if you see that they're coming at you through wounding, that you stay within the certainty of your own truth, of your own heart, of your own love, right? To be the self that has knowledge, which was gained through experience and self-knowing. So how do you do this? Through the contemplation of understanding yourself, right? When you recognize your patterns, when you recognize and you can see, oh, wait a minute, I'm doing that thing, right? I feel hurt and I see myself, I see myself moving into flight or I see myself moving into fight and I can choose not to. 
So to, to share this in the blanket of your, of your field. So in other words, to be this self, to let it be who you are, to be in your field, to carry it in your resonance, in your frequency all the time. And so because it's in your field, right, say then to let it drip and merge between the syllables of each word. So it is so much about our expression, about our breath. So as you speak, if you were holding this in your field, as you speak, it is infusing every word that you say, right? This truth of who you are is wrapped around every single syllable that you speak. So all you have to do is be. If you can hold this vibration that you are right now and not lower it when you go out into the world, all you have to do is be and express, speak, be. You could be going through the grocery store line and just say, how is your day? And in those three little words, you are infusing them with your vibration and you're changing the world, right? Changing their day, changing their feeling, how they experience their day. To say again your name from whence you came, right? So this is there's, your name is infused with the fullness of who you are. So the name you were given, your actual name on this, at this time is infused with the essence of what you are. To speak this language, to emerge, to let yourself feel the earth and its purge, to feel the self unconquered. So they're saying to be through the earth and its purge, to be here through the chaos of everybody unraveling and to stay the self unconquered. This is what we're trying to do. You gotta be able to hold the light no matter what is going on. So this is, they are, they are trying to help us, right? To be who we're meant to be. This is what it means to be a light worker. And I know that term is used in a bunch of different ways. I mean it for those of you who have, who want to, who agreed, who came, or who have decided to be here to help with the humanity's ascension. ascension. And you're saying, um, uh, here we are. You say, thank you, angels. Thank you for sharing. You're so welcome. Saying, sounds like karma doesn't disappear. We must choose and honor and to heal and release. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. You're absolutely right. It doesn't just evaporate. We have to learn from it. That's the goal, to learn from it. Yeah, we must choose to do the work to better find and bring forth more of ourselves, our song, our name. Yes, beautifully said. Thank you for that. And Mary's saying, passage made by breath of what is sought. So cool that we can pave the way just by being ourselves. Yeah, right? I know. It is actually amazing. And it's inspiring, I think, that it's literally just to try. And it, it gives us that much more reason to try to stay in that vibration no matter what we count encounter out there. Not in a way that is spiritual bypassing. Because there may be times that if you are out in the world and you get triggered, honor that trigger because it's a shadow that we have to then, like they're saying, that we have to let it unfurl. We have to respect it. Let it dance its dance and see it and then let it go, right? And, uh, but then try to come back to our, tr to our true self of like, I am the light, I'm holding my space, I claim my right to be here, right? So they say, we end what we seek. They say, I am the sore thumb. <laughs> awesome, all right. Okay, so then they say, yeah, to say again your name from whence you came, to speak this language, to emerge, to let yourself feel the earth and its purge, to be the self unconquered. So no matter what's going on, to try to stay in our high vibration, that is the desire, that's the goal, that's what we need to do. And it is not easy, and I don't think we know how to do it yet, and so we gotta figure it out now. Like this is the time, and they're giving us this space of protection, of contemplation, to do it. So we have work to do, we have real work to do, you know what I mean? Like this is, this is the real stuff. Like I know it just feels like happy, airy, fairy, it's not, like this is the real deal, this is what matters. So yeah, I take it so seriously and also with love and joy and fun because <laughs> it's meant to be fun too, but also like, yeah, we can't forget. We can't set it aside and come back to it later. Yeah. All right. Next paragraph. This is the last paragraph. They say the daily ritual of life that will emerge the self enfolded by daylight. So they're saying that coming in the future, this is when they're, they're, they're sort of timeline shifting here. They're saying that the forest is coming up where we have the states of protection. And then they say the daily ritual of life that will emerge. So what is coming in the near future beyond the, when we're done with the contemplation period, what we're stepping into, the daily ritual of life will be enfolded by daylight. So no more shadow, no more place to hide, no more safe space. We're going to be enfolded by the daylight. They say the trees relinquish their claim upon you now. So when we get to that stage, the trees relinquish their claim. No more safe space. We're going to be out. Like it or not, we are outed, right? We are going to be outed. And I think that's it, is that there's going to be a time where people will see your frequency. Like there's going to be a time when people will see what you are, whether you want to show them or not. We're going to be outed. 
And so when that happens, they say they shade you no more. And this is, I'm just realizing this, that we've been hearing this, and we will get to a time and a space where everybody's life path is going to be visible to each other. So we will be outed whether we want to be outed or not. They will shade you no more. The instant of this time beckons you onward and you must make ready. So, wow, you guys. Like, I'm just realizing as we're talking through this what that means. It's, it really is. It's saying, like, now is the time to get comfortable with it so that when people see you, you don't retract your energy and lower your vibration in order to conform. Yeah, and there will be that time. I've seen that come up in dreams. I've seen that come up in channeling that there will be a time when we are all seen as we are, when our light will shine and, and it's like a change in perception. It's like, I don't know if the veil thins. I'm not sure how this happens, but we are going to be seen. So we got to get used to it now. <laughs> yeah. They shade you no more. The instant of this time beckons you onward and you must make ready. The times will change and your life in its perilous form must move onward into the space of heady understanding of the self that you are. So, and this is interesting. The times will change your life. And they say the times will change. So this is, they're saying it's going to be different and it, the world is going to respond to us differently because like I said, you can't just blend in anymore. That who you are is going to be known, really known. And yeah. And so as that helps, um, where was I? And your life in its perilous form. So what they mean by that is like, if you're not solidly planted and this happens, you get exposed and you retract, it would be easy to lose your way, to lose your path, to lose your reason for being here. So perilous is like, this is not guaranteed. Like we have to do our work. We have to be ready for this. So you must, and what I mean by it's not guaranteed, it's not guaranteed that, that, that like if you are put in that position, you can be affected by it if you're not ready. You can dim your light and find it hard to shine. And how much harder to step out when everybody's seeing you without any, no safe space to practice. Yeah, you must move onward into the space of heady understanding of the self that you are. So it is going to be an experience, like heady understanding. It's going to be a lot for us to hold, right? To be that self, they say, un, um, to be that self that you are, unconquered, unrelenting, and yet at ease in their own self. This is what we need to get to, the state of mind, the state of being we have to be in, where we are unconquered, unrelenting, and yet at ease in our own self. So there's just a state of like, here I am. Here I am. I claim my space on the planet. I'm meant to be here. And no matter how anybody responds to you, you still show up as you are and you see them in their wounding with compassion, right? That's the goal. And yeah, unrelenting at ease in your own self to be that self intertwined within your spirit undivided yearning no more so there's no feeling like I should be something else I wish I was somewhere else it's like a full acceptance of your experience and who you are to be that self intertwined with your spirit undivided yearning no more the blanket of what you are is completed and may be shed so this is like all your karma at that point completed and let go of may be shed like the leaves so love that, that idea that the leaves were, sh were holding us in the space of contemplation, protecting us. The leaves drop, your karma drops, you are seen, you're exposed, right? Say, no longer bare, but revealed for what you are. Guys, this is just really coming home. I did not realize this when I went before today, before talking about it with you. I didn't realize what they're talking about here, but it is just like the, the, importance of this is just hitting home and I just I wish I had the words to do they've got the words to do it justice but I am feeling this so deeply that this is what's coming that we are going to get to a place where we are laid bare that you and your high frequency exactly as you are is going to be seen right and that is huge and that means so much to us that is consequential we have to be prepared emotionally spiritually for that experience right no longer bare not uh, but revealed for what you are they're saying take hold you are required. Wow. Take hold, you guys. Like, grab on. <laughs> grab on to the angels. They will help us. You are required. We say your name. Oh, gosh, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I just, I feel that as such an important message. So important. I really feel like we are being called forward. And they're telling us the importance of this. And we have time. It's not like, no need to freak out. We have time to do this work. 
but the importance of it, I think, cannot be understated. Yeah. Wow, you guys. You're saying, it's awesome. I am very grateful. Yeah, me too. Nowhere to hide. Exactly. And it's an amazing thing. Like, I want to emphasize that. Like, to be seen as you are is an incredible thing. But if we're not ready for it, if we're used to or accustomed to hiding and blending in, that's not a comfortable thing. So we got to get used to it. Yeah, I love the metaphor of the trees, losing the leaves to reveal. Me too. Saying this was so good. Yeah, I am I'm in love with this message. <laughs> Even more so now that I get that last part. I didn't understand that before. It takes, a t- it takes time sometimes to sift through and really let this sink in. So yeah, so boy, profound, you guys. <sighs> Thank you so much for sharing this with me. I learn, I learn more. When I share it with you guys, I get more out of it. So it's really our collective energy that holds this message. And this allows us to perceive it more deeply. So I'm super grateful for your participation and your energy in helping with processing these, these messages that we're getting. Because it is, they're, they are, they are stepping up their game. The angels are bringing it. <laughs> and, they're, and they're asking us to do the same. Oh gosh, you guys. Okay. You're saying, uh, would you say this is the internal transition from karma to Dharma? Do you know? Yeah, I, I absolutely. Yeah. Ab- Cause the Dharma part is going to be like being in flow, being present with where we are, accepting all that we are holding our space. And this is a huge part of my personal journey right now. Like I'm being told that this is, this is part of what my, my personal lesson is as well as what my role is is to help us and help me. Like all my dreams are about this right now, just recently, about how do we uh, be in the world and not dim our light. And so I'm thinking a lot about this right now. And yeah, and I want to share that with you guys as as I'm moving through it. If it can be at all helpful to you, then I want to share it too. So, because we're all in it together, right? You're saying deep breath in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I do feel like I need a deep breath. I do. This one hit me, you guys. This one, I'm feeling it deeply. Um, phew, I was pushed into unconscious spaces right now, like in deep meditation. Very cool. Okay, you guys. I hope you have an amazing weekend. And I would just say as we go through the weekend, maybe notice. Maybe take this time to notice if there's any time this weekend where you feel yourself conforming your vibration because you're around other people. If you feel yourself bending and blending yourself and to be just become aware just to watch ourselves as we do that yeah any ways that you feel yourself retracting your vibration yeah i did that to see you know i did that last night i was out to dinner with a friend and i had i finished way before they did because i'm like a super slow eater and I had French fries. Yes, I do eat French fries. You guys know I'm like, I eat really clean. I'm vegan and I like French fries. <laughs> so not all the time, but I like them. And I had, I had, I didn't want to eat all of them and they were just sitting there. So I just put some on their plate. And then immediately I was like, oh, and I asked, I was like, oh, should I not? Cause their expression was funky. And I was like, oh, should I not have done that? Is what I asked. I felt myself pull back. And it was a, uh, and they were like, no, I'm thrilled that I wanted, they wanted the French fries. I just didn't want to ask. And, uh, and I was aware of me reading them and contracting rather than just allowing me to be me. Um, and that was that feeling of pulling back. How do you pull back? Where do you ever feel like you're stepping on someone else's toes or yeah, let's pay attention to that this weekend. Let's make that our group practice. you say. Um, uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. You're saying, uh, thank you very much. I'm saying I'm definitely going to be among some trees. <laughs> thank you. And the angels so much for this supportive, important message. You're super welcome. Thank you, Mary. All right, you guys sending you tons of love. Have a great weekend and I will see you next Friday live. Bye you guys.